everyone, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro 360 AIO. This is a white ARGB model. So we will be, I will be um, unboxing it, showing you how to install it on an AM5 uh, platform. And we'll also compare it to the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 non-pro uh, 360 model that I have, and it's a black ARGB model. So what I will be testing on, I have an open air um, thermal right PC case and with a gigabyte or X870 motherboard and I'll be testing it on the Ryzen 7 9800X3D. So comparing the specs on the back of the two boxes, there is not a whole lot showing that there's much of a difference. There is an increased weight with the Pro model. It comes in at 1,945 grams versus 1,870 grams for the non-Pro. And looking at the radiator fans, the Pro model comes with three P12 Pro ARGB fans, whereas the non-Pro model just comes with their P12 PWM fans. Now, with the Pro fans, the fan speed ranges from 400 to 3000 RPM, which is substantially higher than the 200 to 2000 RPM on the non-pro model. But aside from that, there's not much of a difference uh, anywhere else. The dimensions of the CPU block are a little bit different on the pro model, but the actual overall size of the radiator is the exact same. Tubing is the exact same. I do believe the water pump is also the same. Uh, I haven't been able to verify anywhere if the pump has been updated or anything like that. And looking at the VRM fan, they appear to be the same as well uh, at, with a range of 400 to 2500 RPM. So with the addition of the P12 Pro fans, these fans come with seven blades versus the five blades on the non-pro model. All right, so what do you get in the box? Her up. So you get similar to the other one, you get the VRM fan cover. Um, again, this part is not the fan, the fan is actually inside, it's a lot smaller, uh, but you can see it if you just look inside. So you get all of your mounting hardware. Uh, you have your cables. So I'm assuming it comes with the same. Uh, the cables connect to the water block on your, that connects right to your CPU. So you can either use a one cable and connect it to one fan header and control everything that way. Or you can have the three in one where you can connect it to the pump for your CPU fan and another fan header for VRM and control each one independently. We're gonna put that. So it has a bunch of AM4, AM5 hardware and you get some MX6 thermal paste. I do not see So using the, um, if you're on AM5, you just have your mounting brackets that you need to use to connect it to the AM5 uh, motherboard. However, if you're on Intel, LGA 1700 or 1851, there's the special contact plate. So you actually have to take the mounting bracket off the motherboard and replace it with this. And that's what you're gonna connect your um, the AIO2. Reasoning behind this is that the CPU, when you push down on the CPU mounting bracket, it sometimes bends the CPU die. This applies pressure evenly all the way around, so you end up with a flatter surface and better contact with the AIO. And then we have the radiator. 
Get this out. So all of the fans are connected to the radiator and all of the cables going from your fan is going through this sleeve and it's coming down and connecting into this pump header or the pump head and over here on the side is the connector where these cables will connect and you can control all of your fans either through the one pump header or with the one fan header or you can have the three in one and then there's also the ARGB. Uh, cable. Looking at this right off the bat, it looks almost identical to the non-pro version. So we'll get that off and do a quick comparison. So comparing everything side by side, it looks almost identical. There's the same height, same width. The most obvious difference is that the pro model, the fans have seven blades, whereas the non-pro model, it has five blades. Everything else looks essentially identical. So like I said, we're going to be testing or we're going to be installing this on a AM5, AMD AM5 Ryzen 7 9800X3D. If you are on Intel, this is what I was talking about. This bracket right here holding your CPU in needs to come off and it's going to be replaced with this mounting bracket instead. When you're doing that, make sure to take the tension off by opening up the arm before undoing any of the screws. Otherwise, this is just gonna pop right off. Now, for mounting on AMD, you're going to need the two brackets. Let's see if we get left, right. And you're gonna need the risers and the screws that comes in this bag labeled AMD. So we'll put the one with the L on the left. Don't tighten this too tight. Snug will be good. You don't want to strip anything. The one with the R is going to go on the right. There we go. Everything's nice and snug. And now the thing that I forget to do way too often, take the plastic off the bottom. If you have ridiculously high temperatures, chances are you forgot to take that off. All right, so before mounting, here's what you need to decide. Are you going to go with the three in one and control each fan and pump independently? Or are you gonna go the all in one and just control everything with one fan header? I'm gonna go with the three because I like to be able to uh, have the ability to control each one independently. And the reason why you need to connect this now is that we have to loop it under here so it's tucked out of the way and you can't do that when you have it mounted to the CPU. Go. And they're nice and snug. And then we're just gonna wrap each one down under here. It's gonna go to the same place that the uh, ARGB cable is. And now you need a pea size amount of thermal paste right in the center should do. The pressure from the block when you screw it down will push everything out. Now the screws, when this first came out, there was an issue with the screws not being long enough and you had to put a lot of pressure to try and get them to connect and thread. Uh, and people have damaged their um, motherboard, but now they increase the length of the screws and makes it much easier to connect. So line up the one screw. Now get one screw threaded lightly. And then once that's connected, go over to the other one and get that threaded lightly as well. And then both are connected and we're just going to go back and forth, uh, tightening a little bit each one at a time until it is snug. The reason for going back and forth is just so you don't put too much pressure on one side and warp anything. In the bag, there's a few different types of screws. These thick ones are actually meant to mount through the fans, whereas the smaller ones with the washers, they are going to mount in these little holes on top of the radiator. So mounting the radiator is pretty straightforward. 
depending on if you want to mount it to the top of your um, your case or to the side. So I prefer to do two corners. Once they're in, this is gonna be held uh, in place and you won't have to manually hold it. So we're gonna put one washer over here. We'll loosely thread that in by hand. Then we're gonna come over to this corner. So I wouldn't tighten these too tight, just put them snug, just in case you need to move it around a bit to make sure all the holes line up. Just like I did right there, I put it in the wrong, in the wrong row. Those outside ones are for 420 millimeter AIOs. There, once you get those two, it's gonna be held in place and you can just go along and put all the other screws in. Now we have all the screws in, everything's lined up. We're just gonna tighten everything up just so it's snug. Do not over tighten or you'll strip some of these uh, the threads. All right, so now everything is mounted. Let's go and plug the cables in. All right, so I moved the radiator out of the way just so you can see a little better. Now you're gonna have multiple different types of fan hitters on your motherboard. We're gonna start with the CPU fan hitter and that is where your fan hitter labeled fan, that's where it's gonna go. Now, if it's not labeled like this, check your manual. It might have a different name for uh, the different fan headers. The cable labeled pump, that's for the water pump, and that's gonna go for gigabyte, the CPU OPT. And then VRM, that can just go to any available. Uh, let's see if I can find. My motherboard has multiple just system fan headers. It can go on any one of those. Then all that's left is for the ARGB header. Uh, it's gonna have, it looks like it has four pins with one missing, so it's three pins with a missing one right there. And on, let's see if we can get a better. So on the gigabyte is gonna be the GDV header right here. It's got the two space and the one. All of the fan headers are now. Then what's left is this here sticker, peel that off. And the VRM, oh yeah, so here's what I was talking about. So like I was saying, this part, that is not a fan. The fan is right in there. And this connects by magnets. So there we go. So it easily comes off and goes on. A little piece of plastic there. So on average, the decibel level was around 55.5 decibels. And this comes in quite a bit louder than the non-pro version, just because this is going up to around 3,000 RPM, whereas the non-pro version only hits around 2,000 RPM. So that initial speed is going to create more noise. And the non-pro version only hit a decibel level of around 44. This is around 11.5 decibels louder. So it is quite a bit louder. So as part of the testing, I will test it out with max settings so that it's operating at full RPM, but then I'll also turn the RPM down a little bit so that we're operating at around 44 decibel. That way we can compare for a normalized performance of the pro version versus the non-pro version at 44 decibels. And here's a better capture of the sound. So testing this on the Ryzen 7 9800X3D, we're seeing a total power draw of 140, almost 144 watts. And the temperature peaked uh, at 80.2 degrees. And this is at 10 minutes in, or almost 10 minutes in, the second 30 minute run of Cinebench R23. Now, comparing that to the non pro version, which came in at 84.6 degrees, we're seeing a 4.4 degree drop in temperature. So the addition of the fans um, does make uh, a pretty good impact to the temperature. So testing this out in Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, to see how well it does at gaming. Uh, this is one of the more CPU demanding games I find. And the temperature did peak at 66 degrees, but for the most part, it stayed around 63 to 64 degrees. And that's in this specific scene in the game, which I find is very CPU demanding. 
When comparing this to the Ampo version, the temperature was between 65 and 66 degrees for the most part, and it did peak at 67 degrees. So as far as gaming goes, we are picking out maybe an actual, well, I guess, is decreasing the temperature by a degree, uh, which isn't very significant. So turning the fan speed down to 68% on the Pro model brings the decibel level to around 44, 45 decibels, which is comparable to the non-Pro model. And almost 10 minutes into the second 30 minute round of Cinebench R23 with the reduced fan speed, we're getting a temperature of 82 degrees. Compared to the non-pro model at 44 decibels is 84.6 degrees. So we are getting a 2.6 degree decrease in temperature uh, just because those fans, even though they're operating at around the same decibel level and about the same fan speed, because 68% of 3000 is roughly 2000 RPM. So by taking away that speed advantage, the addition of seven blades over five blades still offers a, a performance improvement over the non-pro model of 2.6 degrees.